Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of So You Want to Be a Video Podcaster. Yeah, I forgot to say that last time. Anyway, um, so this episode, uh, or this, this part, this is the part number five, or part, um, the fifth part of six, I don't know, part five of six of, of my series on how to do video podcasting. I'm actually thinking about doing a seventh episode to kind of talk about things I may have forgot to talk about, but I haven't decided when we do that yet. Um, anyway, this is all about lighting and using a green screen. Yeah. So um, anyway, so let's, let's just get right into this. Uh, so if you're in a studio situation like I am, um, uh, the more light, uh, well, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's studio or not, the more light, the better overall. Um, that's why you want to be able to have an adjust, just, a, you know, you want to have a, a camera where you can adjust the exposure. So, um, uh, you know, the, the video camera I've been using for years and years and years, you can adjust exposure. Um, matter of fact, um, I didn't talk about that. White, sorry, white balance exposure. So white card, gray card. Um, so if you have the ability to, to do that, the phone, the, the Filmic Pro that I'm using, um, you notice it, 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 it's the, uh, yeah, I mean, the exposure is, is dynamic. I didn't lock it in, which I probably should have locked all that stuff in. Okay. I've locked it in on, on the, on the thing. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, anyway, uh, so if you want to be able to, uh, adjust your, um, your exposure, your light, your, uh, your, um, your, uh, white balance, everything that if you want, you want as much as you can try to find a camera that can do that. Your phone can do it. If you get the right app for it, um, DSLRs, digital cameras, various levels of, of control over that, um, video cameras, not all video cameras can, but some can. So, you know, try to get, try to get, you know, a camera that can do as much of it as possible. Um, but what I what I did when I first started was, um, and I was using the flip cam and the Codex Z I eight. Um, and so I sat in front of a window, so the window was behind the camera, and I recorded during the day because natural sunlight, it's almost unbeatable as far as how much light you're going to get because cameras cameras need light. They need a lot of light to do to do their job effectively. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, the disadvantage is that. Um, on video that's longer than, I don't know, like 5, 10, 15 minutes, you, depending on the time of day you're doing it, like say if you're doing it in the morning or doing it in the evening and the sun's going down or sun's going up, uh, the light level can change and it can be noticeable. So if you're doing it like at high noon, like, you know, from like between 10 and like 3 or 4, for the most part, the light, the light level is not going to change except when it's cloudy out. So it might be noticeable in the video that all, all of a sudden things are getting, uh, things are getting, um, uh, darker or brighter. Uh, let's see here. What else I got going on? Yeah, I already did that. Okay. Um, so what I use as far as regular lighting is I use LEDs. Now you can use regular lights and they've got, you know, all these, you know, camera, camera kits and, and lighting kits, you know, the meant, they're really meant for still, still photography, you know, you know, not video, but still photos. Um, but I use, I use, uh, LED lights. So, um, this was the first, the, the, um, the, both these are newer, N E W E R, newer. I don't know. I say newer. Um, anyway, so this was the first light that I used. Uh, this is the CN160, and it has 160. Let's uh, let's pop this let's pop this baby out. It has 160 individual LEDs on it. Um, this is a diffuser, so it helps kind of helps with the brightness in your eyes, but also helps widen the light a little bit, make it softer instead of so harsh. So I always suggest to keep keep them on there. This is the this is the one I bought more recently, and this is the 176. 
Yeah, 176, there's 176 LEDs. So it's only 16 more, but it's way brighter. What I like about this one is that it's much thinner, which means it's lighter. Um, and there's actually, uh, there's, there's a knob back here that you can use to uh, adjust everything. This one has the knob on the side, but this one you get like a percentage, uh, you know, from zero to 99% as to how intense it is. Um, so the LED lights, these are, these are crucial um, because they're, they're, they're more energy efficient. You don't have, and they're also not hot. And you want to try to get LEDs that are what's called 5K light. 5K is approximately the quote temperature, uh, the light temperature of daylight. Um, if you do like ink, if you do like incandescent lights and all that, they're they're quote warmer, so they'll tend to be a lower um, temperature. So back in the day, before I swapped to these shop lights, um, the shop lights I had, I still have them, used halogens. So if you notice. When I would lean back, um, I'm obviously I'm not in that situation today because I'm on my, my bedroom. But when I would lean back, um, the lights from those shop lights would illuminate me and would make it would kind of turn me a little bit more orange, for lack of a better color. Um, you know, warmer or more red, right? More saturation. Um, <clears throat> whereas with L, you know, LEDs, they can they can be really, really unflattering, but you can also fix it in post. You can add saturation. Right now, the, the from what I'm looking at, um, my face looks looks like I've got some pretty good saturation on it. When I actually look at this video in post, um, I might have to, I may have to dial that back. Remember, you can fix a lot of stuff in post. I mean, if it's really messed up, it's going to be really hard to fix. But if you get close enough with your settings, you just have to do a little tweaking here and there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so about 5K lights, Please, please try to use them as much as power uh, po possible. You can get batteries for this thing. Um, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the batteries for these lights back here. But um, I found that when I, with these lights, I have it here. There's a little adapter there that fits in the battery thing. You can plug an AC adapter in there. That's badass because you don't have to worry about if you're doing like say multiple sessions, the batteries running out while you're recording, or sometimes I've had some long interviews where the batteries go out. So yeah, <clears throat> if you're out in the field, um, batteries are better because you don't have wires because you don't have to worry about having power. But if you can have power, if you can plug in, that's always the best option. But, um, so I bought some, I bought some new batteries. They're basically the same batteries that both these can use, but for this one, super high capacity. I think I got them to work for three hours on one battery, one charge. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, let's see here. LEDs. Oh, and also like, um, my, my, uh, my lights in my ceiling fan, they're 5k. And the reason I did that, um, was because not necessarily to do stuff like this in, in, in my bedroom, but for like Skype videos, if I'm going to record them, I wanted a 5k light source. Um, so I already have that. Plus I have, you know, I can use these lights. I have this light to light the green screen, which I don't need because when I did the first three, uh, uh, episodes in this series, I noticed that I didn't need to put, I didn't need the light for that. Um, let's see here. All right, typically three lights are um, are enough. I also mentioned about different temperatures. I kind of mentioned that. I made it work, but ideally you don't want, like, say you're using all your lighting is on you is like different temperatures. Like you have a 5K, a 3500K light, and you're illuminating. You'll, you'll get some, it's kind of hard to, like, make it look good. Anyway, three lights are typically good enough. Um, and there's fancy ways to use a three light system. You know, have like something on the side, above, whatever. Mine is real basic. I have two two lights that are high up and then angle down uh, to to illuminate the set. Then I have like one light that's dead on to light my face. I think they call it a vanity light, and that's what I use. Now you can use a single light. Um, that's fine. Um, just realize that, you know, if you're trying to illuminate a larger area that you may need another light. Like if I was in the normal room, there's a chandelier that's above the dining room table that I, I record everything over, but it's regular, it was regular incandescent light, except until recently I have 5k lights in that one too. So I can totally like have some flexibility with lighting. Um, 
So if you're only going to use one light like this, try to get one as powerful as possible um, because you need to illuminate a larger area. If you have multiple lights, it doesn't take as much light to get everything, you know, get everything uh, set up. Uh, let's see here. My notes are right here. That's why I keep looking over here. All right, so in the field, uh, I already kind of mentioned this, battery-powered lights are a must, and make sure you have LEDs. Now, if you can get power, that's great. Uh, decide how many lights you want for the field. Remember, not only you not only need the lights, but you also need tripods or light stands. Um, tripods work fine. Uh, extra batteries, the chargers, that adds bulk, it adds weight. Um, this light, one of the reasons I bought it was as lighter, so if I want something in the field, I can do that. Um, this is probably this is probably bright enough for me to use just as a single light for like an interview with somebody. Um, but if you've noticed a lot of my interviews, I tend to be in a room with natural lighting anyway. I almost never have to use uh, these lights. Um, I have done it, but I don't always have to. Um, let's see here. I think I just mentioned that. Um, now, <clears throat> one thing about using natural light or windows or you know, being somewhere where there's windows is that if you're sitting in front of the window, um, very likely the uh, the sensor in your camera is going to get blown out, and you, they'll see it'll see you and your your talent or the person you're interviewing, but it won't see anything through the window. So you'd have to like really adjust some stuff. Um, I think my my uh, my PO. Um, interview in Burgundy was that way. I, I tried to adjust it as much as I could, but you still couldn't see really outside those windows. Um, there's, there's some trickery that you can do, but I, I'm not going to bring all that stuff with me just to be able to like do that. I try to avoid having scenes where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm relying on what's through the window. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I just said for my Napa trip in 2015, I brought everything. I brought my boom you know, my boom mic or the, the, the shotgun mic and the boom that you can put with it. I think it was heavy. I brought all my tripods. I brought all my lights. I brought everything with me, but I was in a car. We drove all the way there. So it was actually a van. So it was pretty good. Temperature and exposure. I kind of already touched upon this, but what is temperature? It's a value that describes how warm or cool uh, a light is. So it's also known as white balance. Um, so warm tends to make things look more red or orange. Cool makes it look more blue. I've already mentioned that some lights are anywhere from 5 to 5,500 Kelvin or K. Um, so you want to make sure you have lights with that. Uh, mixed temps. In some cases, you might be inside and there are other lights in the room. Normally, they'll have a lower warmer temp combined with a 5K light. It can look a little weird. I'm just reading straight from my notes. Um, if you focused on your talent with a white card, which I just showed, um, just white balance, and then they move such that the room light illuminates them or, you know, that it's, they, they might look a little more saturated. Um, and then also my green screen shows, oh, exhibit this from my, yeah, I mentioned, you know, I lean back and all that. Um, and I already mentioned, try to eliminate any of the lights other than the lights that you bring or that you use to, to do everything. Exposure, uh, basically how bright or dark your, your, your image is. I mentioned I showed you the gray card. Uh, it helps you set exposure, lock it in. Um, you can just eyeball it too. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're using your a an app like I have here, or you're you're able to like on my, on my camera, I have a remote control, and, I, and when I look at the LED LCD screen, I can kind of mess around with that. Um, let's see here. Uh, so slightly overexposed is not so bad. It's, it's typically better than underexposure because um, if you're underexposing it, you're not getting as much information, whereas you're overexposed, you're getting way more information into the sensor. So if you've, if you've ever shot something underexposed and you're trying to brighten up, you brighten up the image, you're trying to brighten stuff that's not there, so you get more of what's called noise. Green screen. Uh, so do you need one? Probably not. I do because I'm trying to be fancy. Uh, it depends on your setup. If you're comfortable with your background, like, you know, if you're going to, you know, if, if, if the background uh, of, where you're, of where you're at is fine, that's, you know, that's fine. Um, it's like in this case, I, I don't want my bed in the background. Um, I'm doing this out of convenience in my bedroom rather than setting up the whole set. Um, but I have the green screen just so I can keep my look and feel pretty much the same. Um, all right. So what is a green screen? So the green screen is that magic that Hollywood does to eliminate uh, a background uh, or not to eliminate a background, but more to put in a background that you want. 
So, I mean, they typically use blue versus green because uh, blue is a better color overall for most people through all skin colors and all that. The only problem you have with blue is blonde hair sometimes gets lost in blue, whereas with green, it, it, there's enough of a contrast with blonde hair that, that it doesn't get lost as much. Um, but, uh, you know, the bottom line allows you to, to put in scenes um, that you do like my, my Halloween episode, I put different scenes in there. Um, I've done it with uh, other other specials. I put other backgrounds in there to kind of theme it out. Um, but in general, I just use my barrel my barrel room from uh, Bordeaux um, as my, as my background. Uh, let's see here. You want to get a good quality green screen setup. Um, it should include the two stands, a crossbar because that's how it's attached. Uh, you want to avoid the ones that have the umbrella lights because those are the ones meant for like regular photography. And they, a lot of times have fluorescent lights, light bulbs or incandescent light bulbs instead of LEDs. Probably more and more they have LEDs, but when I first started this, they were all almost always regular incandescent. Um, clamps. Oh, I'm sorry. It's kind of late at night. So clamps, that helps get the green screen uh, attached to your, your stands. Uh, you try and want to you want to stretch it out as much as you can because the more wrinkles on the green screen, the more difficulty your uh, editing software has to uh, get out the green. Um, you can get some super cheap ones from Home Depot. That's what I did. Uh, they feel like ninety nine cents each. The one I have now, uh, they're a little more expensive. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's it. Uh, green screens allow you to pick a background. I've already kind of said that. So you can set a mood. Um, and let's see, speaking of backgrounds, keep in mind copyright. So um, obviously I took this picture. I, this is my picture, so I own the copyright on, on this background. But all the other backgrounds I've used for other specials um, or other, other, other shows, um, I either have permission or it's Creative Commons or a public domain picture. So usually the last two is what it is. I can't remember if I have anyone's permission, like in general, to use their pictures. But... Um, Creative Commons or public domain is the best because you don't have to do any attribution to it. Um, yeah, that's it. Really? It's only 17 minutes long? Man. I think originally this was like a 20-minute episode. So um, that's that's kind of the rundown on lighting and green screens. Um, bottom line, the more light you can get, the better. 5K is usually the best because you get the day, it's, it's daylight. It's easier in post and trying to adjust how you look so you don't look like an Oompa Loompa um, if you're just using like regular lighting. Um, and uh, portability, batteries, all that kind of stuff I just mentioned. Anyway, so uh, that's going to that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, as always, you can click the, link, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to find out more about the products I talked about. Um, hit the donate button over there to send me some ducats so I can buy equipment or you know, help with those medical bills I, I mentioned a few few uh, episodes ago with the heart surgery. They're starting to come in. Yes, I have insurance, but there's some stuff that's not covered. Um, so that'd be great. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.